Hey guys, welcome back to the newly organized shop. So, still got the power hammer set up here, of course, and we're gonna be using that today to forge some hammers. I've been messing with the uh, adjustment a little bit and uh, kind of figuring out stuff, you know, lubrication, maintenance, all that kind of stuff. So, that's all fine and dandy, um, but I was supposed to start forging hammers last week, and then this happened, so I need to get right on it and finish up a batch of hammers before I do anything else this week. Okay, so while we're getting stock cut up for hammers, I'm just gonna show you a couple things on the uh, 50 pound little giant here that I'm learning uh, as far as maintenance and adjustment and stuff. So this is the, the, the Pittman rod here, I believe is what it's called. And the uh, entire hammer assembly hangs off of this and uh, it slides up and down in these channels here on the front and back of this uh, wraparound carriage deal. And the adjustment I had to make was with these cross members here and then uh, I adjusted the, the height of the dies which is, which is done with this right here and with the, with the cross member adjustment. So if you tighten these nuts or loosen them it uh, affects the tension on this spring here. And I guess what you want is to have these cross members here straight across so you know horizontal and uh, that's going to provide you with the proper spring tension here and then when that's right you adjust this up and down for your for your uh, heights the height of your dies here which will show you that so what you need to be able to adjust is the uh, height of your dies when it's at the full length of the stroke because that's where the uh, that's where the most um, power is going to be in the hammer and so I've got it adjusted to about seven eighths right now um, I don't know if that's going to be ideal uh, for forging hammer stock which is two and a half inches around it may not be I'm, I'm not really expecting it to be but for most of the other stuff that I'm actually going to be doing it should be about perfect so we'll see how that works Obviously it's not running right. Uh, we have way too thick a stock for what it's adjusted at. Uh, fortunately adjusting it's not super hard. So let's go ahead and adjust it real quick for today's work. And uh, you know, we'll readjust it back down. So we need to bring it up to where it's uh, sitting probably, well, two inches above the, you know, the dies are sitting two inches apart. The only problem we might run into is this rear guide running into the flywheel. Um, that can happen, so I don't know. Hopefully it doesn't happen. Hopefully our spring is tensioned enough to where that keeps it from happening. Well, let's try to adjust it up so we could use it for this, this work.
All right, so it's the next day, and as you saw, there really was no power hammer footage. So what happened? Well, here's what happened. Quite frankly, that's not why I bought the power hammer. Now, I wanted to incorporate it into the process because I'm all excited to use my new power hammer. The fact of the matter is, is that forging hammers is like what I didn't buy it for. Um, so the press and the power hammer are both very useful tools, and they can do a lot of the same things. But there's some things that they don't do so well, and vice versa, you know, back and forth. So there is some crossover, but I didn't buy the power hammer to do exactly what the press does, right? I didn't, I didn't I'm not looking for redundancy, I'm looking for, you know, covering other things that the press doesn't, right? So one thing the press does very well is work with large cross sections of steel, because no matter what height you're working at, it has the same pressing power. And more importantly, perhaps, the large cross section of steel with all that heat contained allows you to use the press to its potential for that period of time to actually work that steel down. Uh, where the press begins to be less useful is the thinner and smaller your stock is because those dyes suck that heat out so fast. As, as long as you're working the steel in the press, those dyes have to be contacting it, right? It, and it's not a quick hit like with the hammer, and they're sitting there and sucking the heat out the entire time. So pretty quick you you know get down to some thinner stock and you really can't do much at all because it sucks the heat out so fast and you're done forging. You have to heat it back up. Whereas the hammer, you can work, uh, particularly with smaller, thinner pieces, you can work the steel for much, much like you can actually work it on the hammer and get something done. So that's one big thing. So I bought the hammer to forge blades and also like, you know, bits on axes and stuff to where we have thinner, thinner cross section of steel. I could have gone ahead and adjusted the hammer up. You just needed to get the hammers forged instead of playing around with uh, new equipment, okay? So, you, you know, playing around with new equipment that I didn't really buy it for this anyway. So I got all excited. Anyway, long story short, I got the hammers forged. They are ready to heat treat now. And there's only one hammer I have not forged yet. And that's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to show you that process because it's a neat, it's a neat hammer. It's a cross pin and a straight pin. So just on both sides. So let's uh, fire up the forge and get it done. So we got this neat hammer forged. It's a combination straight peen and cross peen. And it's for drawing out efficient, aggressive drawing out of stock. So uh, yeah, had a little straightening on the on the ends here, whatever you would call uh, on the peens, and uh, got everything good to go. Just ground this off a little bit on each end, cleaned up the, the chamfer on the eye, and we're uh, normalizing this batch of hammers right now, so we'll go ahead and get this one in the forge and keep going.
guys, so we got this special hammer finished. Obviously, we've got a straight pin on this side, a cross pin on this side, and it is specifically for aggressively drawing out stock and any other fullering type applications. So, thanks Nick for ordering this. This one is headed up to Idaho. And I'm gonna keep plugging away on the rest of the batch of hammers. So, appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you on the next video.